looking for someone to guide you along the way, help you out with whatever you might have a problem with, or maybe point you in the right direction for somebody that can help, or if you just want somebody to uh, complain to about the software not working the way you want or bounce ideas off of, I'm probably the guy to go to. With us today is Lars, and Lars, would you like to give a quick intro to yourself? Sure. Hi, everybody. Uh, Lars Christensen, uh, CAM Technical Marketing Manager for, for Autodesk. Um, come from a, a um, long background in manufacturing um, and have worked through different machine shops, both in, in Denmark, where I'm originally from, and, and United States, where I now um, walk and, and what I call home. Um, and I've uh, been part of the, the Autodesk CAM team for a while now um, and really excited about showing you guys some of these uh, really neat uh, CAM functionalities that is inside of uh, Fusion 360. Awesome, thank you. So as you can probably guess and since you signed up for the class, we are going with Make It With CAM today. So if you're looking for Fusion Design software, that will be in another one of our uh, webinars in the series, but today we're focusing on CAM, and I believe specifically two and a half axis CAM. So we do have this as a semi-interactive section, so if you do have questions at any time, there's going to be a little panel over to the right where you can type in your questions. So if it's something general that I'm able to answer and uh, is just specific to you, I'll just send you the answer directly. If it's something that's good for the rest of the group to hear, either something that's educational or maybe something that we need to review again, uh, I'll hold that one off for Lars and then probably rudely interrupt him and say, hey, slow down or go back and go over something again. So feel free to type in whatever questions you have and we'll go from there. And before we get started uh, with the webinar, I wanted to mention that uh, I believe it's not until July, but still, we're going to actually have a really cool CAM session as one of our webinars in July where one of our customers, Dirk the Engineer, uh, if you will come up on YouTube, is going to be hosting it, so teaching us some more cool things that he's done with our CAM software. So if you're interested in CAM and like this webinar, that might be another great one for you to go sign up for. So it's on the events page on the community site for Fusion right now, so check it out. So with that, I'm going to pass it over to Lars and make him a presenter, and we'll be able to see his screen. All right. There we go. I you can, can see it. That's perfect. All right. So, um, yeah, really uh, excited about um, getting the opportunity to show you guys uh, some of this uh, this neat cam that is inside of, of Fusion. Um, it's neat because you know Fusion being a CAD software and then also have um, this CAM module uh, right within it, uh, and it's it's very powerful actually. So so as many of you guys probably know, Fusion comes in a couple of different flavors, um, and uh, we today we're going to primarily talk about the the two and a half axis, um, but I also do have a model for. Uh, for some free access, so if we if we have the time, um, and and um, you know I'll definitely make sure that there's room for questions in the end. But if we do have the time, then um, I'll definitely be more than happy to show you that also. Because again, you know free access um, in in many CAM software is considered um, very difficult, and uh, inside of Fusion it, it's fairly easy. So what we have on the screen here. It's just kind of like a, I wanted to give you guys an idea about what we're kind of like working on. So we have this pedal box um, uh, from the BAC Mono race car. And um, specifically what we're going to look at today is the throttle pedal. That's probably the most exciting one of them, right? Um, and I just kind of like want to show you guys how you can go through and program that with two and a half axes and why we are doing some of the things we're doing. So make sure that if you have any questions, make sure, uh, as James said, you type them in the question uh, area. Also, if you want us to go a little faster or slow a little down, we will, you know, we will adjust this as we're going along here. So the throttle um, uh, pedal itself, 
uh, looks something uh, like this. So, of course, when you, when you get into to, to machining inside of, of Fusion, it's always a good idea to kind of like knowing where you're coming from and, and kind of where you are going. So, so this part here is a typical two and a half axis. It's going to have two setups though. Um, well, actually, it's going to have multiple setups if you've got to do all the different side holes that comes in through the side. We're not going to worry about those. We're just going to kind of like worry about um, the top and, and the bottom uh, of this throttle pedal here. So there's going to be two setups in your machine, but you're, of course, attacking them step by step. Now, the cam, you know, it comes right out of uh, the, the menu here where you got your sculpt model, pets, render, animation, and then cam. So that's kind of like how you're just accessing over to the cam area. So you can be inside your model, you can model things up, and if you want to, you know, switch through it, as you probably already played around with, that's when you, you kind of like go through that. So right now what we have is, is a single part, the, what we want to end up with um, from this uh, machine, machine this part out, and probably something like 60, 61 and lunum or something like that. Now you do have some some options in here depending on how you want to set things up. Um, generally speaking, you know you could um, actually go in and uh, and have everything set up the way you want it out in your machine. So in, you know depending on how much rush you have on, on your job, it can be nice um, that you you have a table and you have your vice set up. I have some a couple of, of parallels that the raw stock uh, will, will be on. So just be aware of that, you know, if, that this can be nice in the regards to now you can actually kind of like see what's going to happen exactly out of the machine. And of course these models uh, are available um, either through um, games or definitely always reach out to me and I'll make sure that, that you get a hold of these uh, model of the table and devices. But many times you can download these right from, from the vendor site. Now, when we're starting on CAM, what we really uh, normally start out with is a setup. Um, and that's kind of like the first uh, step you always will do when you're doing CAM inside of Fusion 360. Um, the setup is really where we are telling the machine where we are, or we're telling the, um, uh, the computer where we are going to be on the machine. And of course, as you can see here, there is some good uh, pop-ups that shows, uh, shows this to you. So I'm going to select this, this setup area and we're going to be working over here over to the left. Now when I selected this, you kind of like see that we get this um, yellow box uh, around and, and that's because Fusion tries to figure out what are we going to machine here. Um, so what we have is we have this model area over here uh, to the right and if I select here and I select on our throttle pedal, you will see that, you know, that big yellow box goes away and now Fusion is only um, looking at the pedal. That's one of the neat things about being inside of, of a software like Fusion is that the computer knows there's something there, right, versus like if you're machining in 2D or something else. So that's, that's really neat. Now as soon as I clicked on that, you will also see that we got this uh, 3D gnomon that showed up. And that's our coordinate system for how to tell how the, the part is placed out in the machine. So we got our z-axis, what is normally up and down, um, and then we got our x and our y. And that's what we can we can specify over in this uh, area over here, up here. Now the, I'm going to jump over to the next uh, tab here, and that's actually the start, because you see in the graphics area that that Fusion have automatically put a a box around our part, like our raw stock, and that's you know that's the difference from 3D printing is that he, that we are not building things up here, right? We're subtracting away. So that's our raw block here, and Fusion comes with a lot of, of great options in here. So it defaults to a fixed size. So that's of course if you measure it with your pet calibers and or your tape measure, and you find out exactly what size it is. Um, you also have uh, things like relative size box. And then also from solid that I'll show you if we have the time to jump into to our free access part. But just to show you here, I'm going to do the relative size box. And what the relative size box does is that Fusion 360 will analyze this uh, pedal and find out what um, you know rectangle block it will fit 
within here. And then you can actually add some extra material here. So if I am machining this part in this vise as we have here, you will see that I have a couple of parallels uh, that this part's going to be resting on. And of course, that's to make sure that the, the stock is sitting flat in the vise and also, you know, if you knock it down with a, with a little mallet to make sure that it's, it's tight and snug. So you can actually just go in here and you can add. So if I go to the stock bottom offset and I add, whoops, 110 is probably a little bit big, but if I add um, 10 millimeters to this, then you will actually see that it's going to go down. Well, it actually didn't go down. The reason it didn't go down is because it's using this gnomon here. So if you look, you'll see that it's actually using the z-axis as, as that. So the way we fix that is that we go back to our first tab and we place this uh, 3D gnomon the way it should go. So but to do that, we have different options. So we can go in here to the model orientation, and you will see we get a good explanation of what we need. I normally use the second option down here. Select the z-axis uh, for, for selecting my, my 3D gnomon direction, my c-axis direction. So I'm going to select that one, and then I can actually just click on a flat spot on our paddle here, and you will see that the c-axis jump. And that now means that now if we do go over and look, you will see that now we do have the extra stock on our parallels. So that's how this is interacting. So it's really neat, you know, how these are talking together. This is not, you know, just some uh, dumb, um, you know, calculation that's going on. It knows what the C direction is, what the stock bottom is versus to the top. Now, also when we go back to our uh, set up here for our um, nomen, we can see that we have our z direction is going up, so I'm happy with that. Uh, my x direction is running along, and I'm kind of happy with that, and also my y direction. So this is all good. But one of the things we do have to do is we do have to tell the machine where this is, so where we're picking up our stock out of the machine. Uh, so the machine knows where the stock is. And then we will move down to this area down here. And again, Fusion have a lot of great options in here on how you can you can select that. So you can select stock uh, box point. You can select the, just select the point on your model. Um, or you can select a the model origin. Now, you can also choose here on where on the stock you want to select it. So right now we can select the center, and it will be the center of the block. Uh, we can select uh, the top side three, and you will see that it, it moves around. So these menus in here, they're fairly easy to work with, and you can kind of like, you know, just play around with it, and you can kind of like figuring out where uh, where they they get placed uh, in here. Okay, so that's kind of like how you can select, uh, you know, those different uh, those different points um, on this. All right, I'm going to select this up to the to the upper right here and I just flip my my C direction by poking around with this so let me just get that flip up there and select it there so what I have now selected is I've selected this upper corner of our stock right so out of the machine this is where you will pick up your what we normally call G54 uh, or G55 depending on your machine uh, that will be where we we are locating this this part here that's really all we have to do when it comes to setting up our part to tell it where it is. So the first option here is to say where is our 3D gnomon placed, um, what are we machining, and then how we want to define the stock. And also always remember to measure the stock before you put it in just to make sure that it has uh, the right sizes. All right. So. Um, we will see that when I click OK to that, that we, we do have an indication of this all the time, and we now have this set up over here. And this works very much like it does inside of Fusion when you're normally working, and you're kind of like getting this, this history tree here. Now, I'm just going to turn off the vice and uh, the parallels for right now, um, just so we can kind of like work with it um, in a little bit of cleaner environment. But you will see that the stock still resides in here. So the first tool path that uh, we normally will apply inside of, of, of a machining an operation like this will be a facing operation. And that's actually also the first uh, that is highlighted up here. So I'm going to select that. 
And inside of Fusion, you always get, inside of Fusion with Cam, you always get this dialog up here. And it always looks the same, what makes it really easy to use in here. The first thing you will always do is select um, a tool. So that's the first tab, always the first tab. And uh, you can just go in and hit select here. And what you get uh, is the tool library in here. And you can create your own tools. Um, you can, um, you know, get tool libraries from different places. Um, in this case here, we're just going to use the, the standard tutorial tools that comes with um, Fusion 360. So I'm going to select a 50-millimeter uh, face mill. That's what you normally would use to face off a part, you know, some kind of a, a, a big diameter uh, mill. You could use a standard end mill if you just have them laying around, but normally, uh, just for time's sake, you're using a bigger diameter. And I'm just going to select, hit select down here and select this one. Now, one of the things that is interesting about Fusion uh, 360 Cam is that the, the Fusion knows the size of our stock because we selected it, uh, you know, in our job setup. So we don't even have to select any geometry right here. So we can just select our 50 millimeter facing operation, and then we can apply our feeds and speeds. And when I hit OK, I will actually have that tool path already created. So you know, it almost don't get any simpler. Uh, there's no chaining. There's no reason to select anything. The software knows that if we just want to deck off the size of the stock we specified, then there's no reason to select anything. Now, at this point, we can verify this. So we can go up to the Action tab up here and simulate uh, what we have just created, this facing operation. And you have some different options in here to display things. You can turn the stock on and off. So this is the stock that we specified before. If I uncheck it, you will just see that we see our part again. And if I click on it, then you will see that we again have the, the stock. So this is really neat that you can simulate on the screen what's going to happen out of the machine. So let's just hit the play button down here and we can kind of like see what's going to happen here. So here we, we have our facing operation. It's just going to deck off that millimeter that was left on top uh, of our part here. And uh, that's really our first tool path. Um, right there. Um, and and we can go ahead at this point, if we're happy with what we see here, we might just go ahead and post this code out, right? Because the code is what the CNC machine needs. So, you know, if you're new to CAM, then many times you like to kind of like post each operation out and go out and run that operation, go back, program the next operation, post that out, go out to the machine and run it so it doesn't become like this long program where you know things can pretty quickly become complicated. So to post this facing operation out, all we do is go up to hit post. And uh, traditionally uh, here you can you have some different settings in here. You got uh, the different posts that comes with um, Fusion 360. And one of the things that is very neat about um, Autodesk is that we actually all generic posts are free. And we have a dedicated post team. So if you have a specific machine that you can't find in here, um, if you go out to the cam.autodesk forum, you can actually get a hold of the post team right there. And they will help you get up and running. So uh, this is one of the things that is you need about Autodesk versus uh, other cam uh, vendors out there. Now I'm just going to go ahead here and post uh, this program out. I'm just going to throw it to my, to my desktop here. And uh, what we will end up getting is a, uh, a pretty um, s uh, basic uh, code here for this facing operation. So you will see that it calls up the tool. Um, you will see that it, it's switching over depending on what it's doing in, in metric or inches. And then it calls up tool number one. It throws in your spindle speed. And then it does the moves. And this is the code that you will then bring out to the machine either with a thumb drive, uh, or, or, or disk or whatever whatever you're using. But just with a few clicks, we've actually already created code that the CNC machine will be happy happy with to, to, uh, to take off this part. Now to go to move on um, on this on this part here, um, we will rough out this uh, the rest of the part and there we're going to use something called adaptive clearing. Now adaptive clearing um, it's, it's both in, in both the standard Fusion 360 and in the Ultimate. 
and it's extremely powerful. Um, it is definitely, you know, the best roughing tool pad that I've ever seen, and and I use it all the time whenever I can get away with it, just because it is uh, so good. So I'm going to select it, and you will see that again the menus look the same as it did for the facing operation, because we're really keeping the same kind of like easy tabs to work your way through. So I'm going to go ahead and select a, a tool here, and I'm not going to use the same 50 millimeter big uh, face mill we used before. I'm actually going to go in and use a little bit smaller end mill. So I'm going to select this uh, 16 millimeter flat end mill that is in the tutorial here. So I will select that, and you will see that that posted out as tool number two. Now the second tab we have in here is called geometry, and that's where we can specify what we want to machine. So I'm going to click on that, and uh, then I'm just going to go down and hit the edge here of our part, and as soon as I hit that, you will see that it that shows us on the screen what it's going to machine, um, and if you want to flip direction, you can just click on the arrows here. Um, but I'm just going to select it here and just um, hit OK. And you will see that pretty quickly we have created this tool path. Now what is unique about adaptive clearing is that it, it's really the latest and greatest within um, mach machine technology. What it does is it keeps the cutter engaged with the material as much as possible. One of the things about um, um, end mills machining on a CNC machine is they really don't like uh, interrupted cuts or very uneven cuts. So this tool path will actually do that calculation for you and give you a very consistent uh, tool path. So let's see what we got here. I'm going to go up and hit the setup, uh, highlight the setup here and go back up to the actions tab and then we can play through our two tool paths we've now created. So first we see the face mill we saw before, and we actually post it out. And then you will see this adaptive clearing tool path um, machining and roughing around uh, our part here. So it's hey, Lars, a before you get too far, uh, we sure. have a couple of questions that have come in. So the that first sounds... one is, can you make the default folder for your post files uh, different? Can you change the default folder? On a Mac, it always seems to go to the wrong place. So for the for posting out, you mean? Yeah. Yep. Yeah, it should. Um, that's that's a good question. It should stick uh, when you have selected that. Um, but that's might something that I actually have to to look into uh, to see how that uh, how that sticks. So that's a good one. We gotta mark that one down. <laughs> okay. And the next one is how do you save default depth of cuts or step over per tool? The defaults always seem to be too much for the machine that he's using. Okay. Yeah. So you actually do have uh, some 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 options um, in here. So let me just get out. So we can, so as we can see here, we got the roughing we got the roughing toolpath here. I can hear on the questions that we have some people who have already uh, been through the the cam uh, <laughs> and got into and and got into this. What you can do is um, if we go in. And uh, and edit the toolpath just for anybody who is who is uh, who hasn't uh, really played too much around with with the cam before. What you can do uh, is that you can actually control. If we go over to the passes tab in here, you can control uh, the depths. Uh, so if you want to take multiple depths, for example, or you want to do um, the step downs in here. You can go ahead and you can uh, you can create um, you can choose in here multiple steps and I can actually show that when we're machining the shelf over here uh, how you can control these these uh, different step overs in here. So uh, the user wants to actually um, save it back into the tool itself um, because you know the depth of cut really many times depends on like you said uh, your machine and it also um, goes into your tool. So if I go in and edit this operation and uh, let's get back into the tool library in here. So the tool uh, is that we have selected the 16 millimeters in here. Uh, just to show everybody, we can actually go in and we can edit um, the different uh, areas in here for that tool. So you will see here we got the specific for the 
for the tool, you got the holder, you got the holder geometry, and then in here uh, you got your your feeds and speeds, and this is where you can you can change all those. Now I don't believe that inside of Fusion uh, at this point they have let you create uh, these uh, type of uh, operations you can you can save back. That's what you really do is you would you would kind of like go in and um, you can do that in, in some of the other Autodesk CAM software where you create a specific scenario for a specific tool, a specific operation, and then you could save that. So at this point, uh, I do I'm not aware of any way that you can actually go in and and, and make this stick. So you still have to go in and change that if it's not um, good enough for you for your tool. But it's definitely one of the enhancements uh, that is in there to be able to save that knowledge back. Um, it becomes a little bit, you know, it can become a little bit more complicated when you start doing that because now you gotta. You, and it depends if you have if you only have one machine, then it's a little bit easier than if you're having multiple machines. Um, and, and there is some work going on with some tool libraries to give you give you that kind of option. So I hope that kind of like answered answered it. So so right now no, but uh, but it's definitely something you know that they are definitely looking into to come up with a good way to do. All right, any any other? As we on the fly here. That's it. Yep. All right. Well, guys, keep them keep them coming, and and if it's something that we gotta dig a little bit deeper into later on, you know, we have your email addresses, and we will make sure that that we get back to you back to you on that. So what we had at this point was we had our our we had our roughing tool path, and uh, and our finishing tool path, uh, or, sorry, our facing operation, and then our roughing tool path uh, created here. Now, one of the things I wanted to show that I kind of like did when I was going through um, trying to, to answer these questions is that it's very easy to go back into these operations again and take a look at them. So you can just right click on the specific operations, so in this case, the 2D adaptive, and you can just click edit. And when you do that, uh, then you will be right back where you were before and you can now uh, play around with different options. One of the things that I like to show is that on the adaptive um, stock to, uh, to leave is on. So we're actually leaving half a millimeter on this part uh, for a finishing operation. So just so you know, it's a roughing tool pad, so make sure that's on. And also, um, because this is a roughing tool pad, there is a lot of great options in here, and they have um, worked kind of hard on this lately, the development giving you options so you can control how the cutter is in these um, uh, high-end tool paths so you can control how it wraps around and how much you want it to stay up or stay down and things like that. So be aware of that with these uh, five tabs in here that you have some, some really um, good options. All right, so we, we, we roughed out the pot. Now let's throw a finishing tool path around it so we get it to size. And there we will use uh, a contour, 2D contour, and that just kind of like walks around the park. So we're going to select that, and uh, you might go ahead and use the same end mill as you used to roughing with. Sometimes you go a little bit smaller uh, depending on corner radiuses, uh, or also because of wear, because the, the 16 millimeter might be, be wearing as it's a roughing tool path. So I'm going to go scroll down here to the bottom and. Uh, Go back into the tutorial and select a 10 millimeter this time. Now for the contour uh, geometry, I'm going to select the same geometry we did before. So I'm just going to select that. Um, and what I wanted to point out here is that now you will see if you go over to the passes tab that my stock to leave is not on. So the software knows that this is considered a finishing tool pad, so there's not really any reason to, to leave any stock unless people people want that. So I can select that and we will see we just get a single uh, pass around the part with the blue uh, area here just to finishing up the part, take off that half millimeter. Another thing I like to point out with the contour is you will see that it's entering over here closest to where I picked. Um, it's very easy to change inside of uh, Fusion 360 where you want the tool to enter. That's one of the things that can be a little bit complicated in other CAM software and really 
really easy to use in here. So I'm going to go back in and edit this one. So the first tab we have learned is the tool, right? That's where we always select the tool. The second tab is the geometry. That was where we selected, you know, if we had a boundary we wanted to select around. Um, and if we if we go to the passes tab, that was where we had the stock to leave. Now the last tab is everything to do with when we're not engaged with the material. So the passes tab is when we're in the material, and the linking tab is the one when we're outside. So this is actually also where I can select down in the bottom, where do I want to enter the part. So if I just go down here and click on the nothing, and I can just select a point on my part, and if I hit OK, you will see that now we're entering the part over there. So very easy to, uh, to set this up and, and work with this. Um, the next thing we can we can do in this part is we can select and, and machine the shelf to go around the part. I'm actually going to use the same tool and I'm going to use the same um, type of tool path for that. So I'm going to click down here and select the contour. And uh, what is neat is that I can actually just select this edge here. So I'm selecting the inner edge and then I can control what side I want the cutter to be on, so the inside of, in the, our case, we want it to be on the outside here. And when I go over to our tool, you will see that it's still using the same tool, so that's good. And we have the geometry selected, what we just did. Um, it's going to machine, this is the height one, and I'm going to come into that one in a little bit. It's going to machine down to the, to the depth of the chain we selected, so we're good with that. Um, and then if we go to this passes tab, this is where we can add some extra passes. So we can actually add some multiple passes in here, finishing passes, so I can get it to step in uh, sideways here. So I'm going to change this to three passes, and I'm going to make a step over of two and a half millimeters. And you know, you will see that when I hit OK, we very quickly can see what we did here. We get these these multiple tabs here. So this is kind of like the approach as you're going through programming this part. You're kind of like looking at and says, all right, what do we want to do? We want to phase out the top, and then we can kind of like rough and finish things in. And what we have here is pretty much all the machining we have to do uh, for roughing this part out. So we have our, our phasing operation. Um, we can speed up a little bit here. We had our roughing uh, operation here. So we can see this adaptive roughing uh, through here. And then you will see the finishing cuts going to come around here. Just nicely walk around the part. We can see where it enters and leaves the part. And then we have this little uh, little shelf uh, that we are machining here on the part uh, to, to size. Now, one of the things you see uh, is that I'm, as we're programming here, I'm actually not putting any uh, feeds and speeds in for my, my different uh, cuts and, and the, I'm doing that on purpose because the feeds and speeds uh, really depends on two factors. It depends, well, three factors, I should say. It depends on the material, of course, we're cutting. Um, it um, also depends on the type of machine that you're machining on. So if you're machining on a small table mill versus a big, you know, Haas VF3 or, or 5 or so, some big machining center. And then, mostly important, I think, is uh, the tool. Uh, manufacturer. So I have always recommended people to get a good relationship with whoever you're buying your tools from. Talk to those guys and uh, and they will be more than happy to give you feeds and speeds uh, for for your tooling. And I've always relied on that uh, in my own experience and, and my main reason for that is because I'm cheap. <laughs> because if you get feeds and speeds from them, now they will always be a little conservative so you can maybe push it. But if you get the feeds and speeds from your, uh, from the people you buy your tools from, then if there's any issues with the end mills breaking or the drills not drilling, well, then they're more than normally more than happy to replace them. So that's why you haven't seen that if I go in here and edit this operation, that you haven't seen me really putting anything in for the, the feeds and speeds. I really recommend you you create a relationship with whoever you buy the tools from. Um, and, uh, and, and and use their recommend uh, recommendations. So what we've done so far is we really machined everything that has to do mostly with milling on this part here. And really the only things we have left is uh, a few holes, some counter bores, there's a couple of pockets here, and then if we want to 
create the second operation. Well, so I'm going to go ahead. Do that. Before you do that, could you check out the questions? There's a rather lengthy one in there about engraving text. Oh, okay, that's a good one. All right, so engraving text. Yeah, so so that's uh, another one that we. Um, I'm just going to go ahead and look at this. Um, that's a, that's another one that that we are uh, that we are playing around with uh, a little bit is in regards to engraving that. I can't find the the question right now, James. I'm sorry. Hey, I can read it to you real quick, like. Sure. It says, can you quickly demo engraving some text, but more specifically, engraving using a single center line path, not an outline. That is one tool path down the middle of the letters versus creating an outline of the letters. Sometimes letters are small, and an outline is not appropriate. So you just want a, like a single line line text. You know, I'll make sure that we get your email address, and I will get back to you on that because that's actually one of the things that we have had some some uh, talks about uh, on the on the CAM team in regards to how do we, we we handle that better because that's absolutely right. If you're engraving small text, you need to go right down the center line of that. So. I'll definitely, uh, James, if we can make sure that we have that gentleman's name, um, sure. then I'll definitely get back to you on that for sure. Absolutely. Yeah, good questions. Some good stuff. I uh, like it. Uh, so um, let me just go ahead here and, and, and wrap this part up here. Um, so drilling in here, um, you have the drilling options uh, right up here. And when I select the drill, now I got my go-to meeting in the way here. When you select the drill, um, the first thing we normally do is we will spot uh, for the hole. So normal drills are 118 tips, uh, and and they would wander if they don't have kind of like a guidance hole. So if again, if we go into the tutorial, so you should all have these uh, available. Uh, you will see in here that we have some different uh, spot drills in here that we can select uh, for that. So I'm going to select this. And um, when we go to our geometry, one function that I just like to point out is this select diameter. I'm all about being being lazy when you're talking CAD and CAM. So if I check this select same diameter and I select the inside of this hole, you will see that it select the three at the same diameter. So that's kind of like just nice and easy. And I'm going to select this uh, hole here too, right out of the gate. And then we have our four holes that we're going to we're going to drill here. Now, I wanted to show you the Heights tab before. So this is pretty neat uh, because it actually shows up right on the screen here. We can kind of like see the different uh, uh, heights for our clearances and retracts. So clearances is when the machine is wrapping uh, from one end to the other. Retract is between the drills, how high it's going to go. Uh, when is it going to start feeding? So so from a rapid, when it's, when it's flying around to so the point where it's actually using the the feed rate that you specified. And then here, where is our depth going to come from? And again, Fusion 360 gives you some really good options in here. That's all you need. So we might just go in and say that we're going to start from the model top. Now, this is just a little guidance hole, so I don't want to drill all the way through the part. I actually want to control exactly how deep it goes. So I'm going to select the same model top. So by selecting this now, we're actually not drilling to any depth. We're just you know, going to the top of the part. But then right in here, we can actually type in like two millimeters, for example, and now we will just spot right there uh, with our drill and just give a, with our spot drill here and just give us uh, that little uh, that little step uh, that will now catch the 180 grill, uh, drill bit right there. So that's kind of like how you can you can go around with that. Now, to drill to continue on this, I'm going to drill the three holes here, um, and actually also just for the center here, I'm going to go into the drill again. This time, I'm going to go ahead and select a standard drill. So we might go in here and uh, just select. You know, you can see here how the different ones are specified. A 10 millimeter drill here, 118 degrees, and I'm going to do the same thing I did before. I'm going to select. Um, Select the select same diameter, and then also select this one here. Now I want to show you. So we selected the heights, and we had the 
before we selected the model top, we can select that too. Um, for the bottom here, you know, you can select the, the whole bottom. You can also, so that depends on how deep the hole is, right? So, so Fusion 360 is analyzing this. You could also select the model bottom if you wanted that. Um, and now you're sure that it's going to go all the way to the to the bottom, and then you can actually activate the drill tips because the, the 118 uh, point, you know, it's going to have to drill a little bit deeper uh, to to get through the part, and you can actually add a little bit extra if you need to in in, in case of your height. Then this cycle tab over here, um, this is pretty neat. That will give you the different types of, of drilling you can do with a drill. Now you know this if you're just drilling in a piece of wood uh, at the house at home, that if you just start drilling to a certain depth, uh, that then the, you kind of like need to pull the drill out to get the, the wood out. And the same thing goes, of course, with steel, that you need to clear out the chips. So you have some different options in here, and this is all depending on what your machine can handle. Um, um, but we have it available for whatever you need. So something like uh, chip breaking, for example, um, will actually go in and, and kind of like just packing through. So we keep on pulsing and make sure that the chips get out and they don't clog up between the drill uh, and the hole. So now we drill for uh, our, our counter boards. You would actually see over here that it's showing that it's chip breaking versus just going down and wrapping right, right back out. Uh, another thing I want to show is that we have a lot of great options in here for our our operations. So not just you know a short adaptive clearing and the contour. We can actually also go in here and do something like a circular machining. So that will be for this um, bore here that we can actually go in and bore that one out. And it's the same way as before. The tabs stay consistent, so there's not really anything to worry too much about. I can use the same 10 millimeter end mill I did before, and again for my geometry, I can just select the inside of the hole, and as soon as I do that, you will see that it shows in blue how it's gonna how it's gonna machine out with the end mill that bore. Um, one of the other things that I like to point out in here is that there is also a lead to center. So we drilled the center out of this hole. So I want my email to start there. Well, it's just a checkbox right on the link page, and now you will see that it stops right there. So, so pretty, pretty straightforward uh, to do that. And that would actually also go for the last. Uh, there's like a little recess down at the bottom. We're gonna go ahead and, and and do the exact same thing. So again, I just go up here on the Fusion 360 tab, select circular. We can leave it the same tool, and I can just select that face. Uh, and again, if I want to do the same thing, lead in from center on the link tab there, and then I'm, I'm there. So you don't have to hunt too much around things because those tabs uh, always uh, stay the same. Now, I want to leave time for questions, so um, let's, uh, let's move ahead here. Um, I just wanted to show the pocketing routine also before we, we do a second setup, uh, and then we can do the counterboards in another, another time. So the pocket is really right in here too. So you can just hit the drop down and you can select a pocket operation in here. I'm going to select a little bit smaller tool. So let's select a five millimeter flat here. And uh, for the geometry, well, it's just like we have done before. We can select right on our model here, right? So we can just select the edge here, right in here, and we can flip the direction, what is, what is in and out. Um, and, and one of the things I probably would do in here is maybe take stock to leave off just to, to finish them, but then maybe use a multiple depth to do this pocket so the end mill don't go right down to the bottom, but they actually kind of like steps down. So you can kind of like see the different step downs uh, for that. So uh, with this here, we have almost, besides just a few things, we've pretty much uh, managed to... Uh, to program this whole first uh, operation on this part here. So we have our, our roughing tool path, and then we, we did our finishing, we drilled, we did the, the pockets and, and the, the bore here. So we kind of like have that right here. Now, I wanted to show, before we go to questions, I wanted to show what we do. So, so this here, if, if 
you know, this is pretty much, besides the counterbars and a few other things, this is pretty much the first operation uh, on this part. And just like I showed before, uh, we can we have this whole feature tree. We can really just select this, and then we can go ahead and we can post this out on the post processor tab out here, and we can post this out to uh, to I'm just going to post this out to my desktop. Um, and now we will see that we have a lot more code, right, that we had when we just phased. And this is all the, the different tools. Um, and to machine the other side, to deck it off and actually finish this part, we kind of like just using the same approach we did before. We can create uh, multiple setups uh, in here. So we have like a first operation, setup one, or second operation. So I will just literally just flip the part around and, and then picture you will do that out on your machine. And then I can actually just go in and click another setup and you will see that I get down here to the left here, I have a second setup. And we kind of like going through the same procedure as we did to start with. We will select what we're going to machine. Um, we can again choose to stock. We can go into the, to the orientation, select Z-axis to select what is the, the face we're going to machine here. Um, maybe I just spin around and decide we're going to hold it like this. Um, I maybe had machined this hole all the way through the part so it would be good for, for the second pickup. So we can go in and actually just say select a point and then we can go in and, and select that center point as our pickup right there, right? So that will be maybe our G55 if we're doing this out in the machine. And now again, done this, we can again just go up and select the facing operation and uh, and then go in and select the same uh, 50 millimeter face and mill we had before. And we really don't even, again, have to select any geometry because uh, it knows where this, the stock boundary is. And if I select the two operations, hold down control, we should now see that we actually do have um, pretty much the entire part um, machined here for for the two uh, two and a half axis, and of course this is kind of like we can spin it around this machining. We can slow it down as you've seen that I've been doing here. But that kind of like gives us the the finished uh, throttle um, arm in here um, to uh, to machine uh, something like this. It's it's extremely easy to use, um, and, and there's some great tutorials out there. Um, if you haven't played around with it already on how to, to do some of these uh, different um, operations. They're following the same pattern. It's really been the idea from all of this from the get-go uh, from the HSM team is that cam should really be, be easier and, and be high, high quality. Um, so is this good, James? Um, do we have any questions or should we jump into just quickly give people an idea about the free access? Uh, there's a few questions on here that we could take care of before we jump into anything else. Sure. So first, for 2D contour tabs feature, I can't get the option to place the tabs where I want, only by distance. So is there a trick to getting uh, getting to place the tabs where you want them? You should be able to do it with creating some sketch geometry and, and then confine it within there, I believe. But that would be definitely be something to... Uh, to test out there, yeah. Okay, and another question, how are you clamping the part when you do the other side? Yeah, so, so <laughs> that's a good question. <laughs> in this case here, I just did it in my little uh, imaginary <laughs> imaginary world, right? Um, because I still have, I, I have, of course, that, that nice vise um, that I had before. Um, to clamp this part when you flip it around, um, you would probably uh, use uh, maybe some either some soft jaws so um, you can actually on, on most devices you can buy or you make them yourself some uh, 6061 aluminum blocks that you will then machine in um, this the profile so so when you when you go in the other side will kind of like nicely clamp into those soft jars and when you tighten it, then it will sit there. That's one way you could do it. Um, if you were doing a lot of these, uh, you maybe would create a, a 
little fixture plate. I've done that in the past. If you're making multiple of these, and then you could have two vices sitting maybe next to each other. So one here is a standard vice where we put in the first roll block, and then the second one has like a little fixture plate, maybe where there's a couple of dowel pins uh, that we've laid out in Fusion that we could kind of like uh, lay the part in and then um, clamp it down. There's something called Mighty Bites uh, that uh, you can use to kind of like hold things in place like that. Good question. Perfect. All right. There's another one in here. Can you show how to create a new tool shape? Yeah. So, so the tool, uh, you've seen me jumping in and out of the tools uh, all the time. Um, and, and you can also access, access the tool library um, right in here. Um, and, and as you've seen in here, that you can, you can go and you can edit the tools uh, or you can create uh, new tools um, in here for that. Now, if you want to create a, um, a, a custom tool, so you will see on the cutter specific, you will see all the different ones that we support uh, in here of the different tools. Um, but if you got to create uh, your own imported, you can go into a form mill. And I'm not going to have time to show it now, but I, can sh but I can tell you how you do it because it's actually fairly straightforward. Inside of Fusion, you create a revolved uh, part and, uh, and that part will actually be, become, become the tool. But that's a good, that's a good one for a future uh, webinar. Like I said earlier, I know that the developing team is working on a um, on a new tool library, and that would be awesome um, to kind of like tie that in, tie into that. Cool. Very good. Uh, doesn't look like there's any additional questions just yet. So if you wanted to jump into uh, through, oh, there is right when I speak. <laughs> is there I'll just go ahead. Setup? Yeah, is there no, any so I just wanted. To Oh, go ahead, James. Is there any setup speeds and feeds for other materials such as plastics or wood? So, not at this point. Um, we are working. Actually, we're working with one of the cotter manufacturers um, uh, on on this. The the biggest problem, like I said earlier, before the feeds and speeds, is um, really depending on what type of tool you use. Um, so, m most of the times, we don't really get into to the feeds and speeds um, just because it, it is more an indicator of what tool you're using than, than what cam you're using. Um, we are working with OSG who is uh, one of the big um, and we're also working with the other Sandvik and some of the other companies um, trying to, to, to do something with them to try to give you some better feeds and speeds. But I again, like I said before, try to hook up with, with the tool uh, vendors and, and, and get their recommendations um, that can save you a lot more money than, than relying on, on you know the numbers that we have. Great. Uh, so in regards to the 3x's I just kinda I don't want to go too deep into this but I just wanted to kinda like show you guys that you know with Fusion Ultimate there is a 3D uh, tool path available um, in here and, uh, and, and you have the option to actually machine fairly complex uh, geometry uh, within uh, Fusion 360. Um, you've seen um, that I kind of like the same spot as I was before inside the cam. You will see that there is a um, free uh, D toolpath in here uh, for that. And there's all the toolpath that you need to go ahead and, and do. Um, the, these kinds of things. So there's also a 3D adaptive clearing. So that's a little bit different than the 2D adaptive clearing. It can actually analyze uh, the model for the, the steps that is inside of this cavity. Um, I, you know, if you ever get into machining some of this uh, 3D stuff, um, again, you know, in, in the olden days, it was a little bit of an art to do this. It's, it's very easy inside of Fusion 360. I just wanted to kind of like point out a couple of the tool path for what you should know about. So again, the depth of clearing uh, to rough uh, things out of that. Um, the parallel tool path in here, this is what I call the good old mold maker 
tool path. So this is uh, um, should probably be your first uh, after the roughing, after using adaptive clearing. You probably want to go in and uh, and and apply a parallel cut. Um, so it's kind of like a step over, going back and forth. Uh, start out rough and then uh, decrease your step over with that um, as you're machining. Um, because the, the smaller step over, the longer it's going to take, and you might just regret um, <laughs> that, that it's going to take 20 hours to machine a cavity. So start out a little bit bigger. You can always go go finer uh, on that. Um, the the RAM is really good on, on horizontal steep walls, so, so you have that. And then we normally, when you're doing these free access toolpath, many times you kind of have to throw toolpath on and see what sticks uh, because there's a lot of material to be cleaned up. So you probably, like I said, want to go with a parallel after the roughing. Um, but don't forget about the pencil toolpath is probably one of your last. Um, it will go around and kind of like if you think about you had a pencil in your hand uh, and you can kind of like go ahead and clean some of those uh, uh, toolpath up there. But again, just to, to wrap this up, the setup that I have here where I have the, the, the table and I have the, 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 the clamps here, and, you know, it's, it's a nice way to kind of like get a good visualize on, um, on what you're up against. All right, guys, um, as we're coming up here on, on the hour, um, definitely James will make sure that any questions we, we have to um, go in, we will definitely make sure that we get those uh, addressed. And as James says, you know, the Fusion team, you know, shoot uh, things over to us and we're definitely here to help. Uh, there's a great uh, forum, uh, the, the, the specifically for CAM, there is a, uh, a forum on cam.autodesk.com and uh, there's some really good Fusion users over there too. Uh, so definitely, you know, looking for tips and tricks and, and, and things like that. It's a great, great community. Great. All right. Well, again, if any of you do have questions, feel free to email us directly. Uh, if you see my name on the screen right now, just put a period between my first and last name and then at autodesk.com and either I'll get back to you or send your question off to somebody who knows more about it than I do. So unless we have anything else, thanks for joining today. Uh, the video will be up on YouTube shortly, so if you want to recap everything that Lars taught us, taught us uh, it'll be there soon. So thanks a lot for joining. Bye-bye.